Hello, hello, hello. This is Tamika Seaton, President and CEO of Grow Your Nonprofit, where we help startups, small and stagnant nonprofits grow through fundraising strategy, strategic planning, and so much more. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsors of my podcast, Hodges University with a campus in Fort Myers. Stay near, go far. They change lives for the better. Trinity Life Foundation, helping at-risk youth in Collier County change their lives around with their amazing enrichment program. Avid, that stands for the Associations of Haitians Living Abroad. They just opened an amazing support center right here in the beautiful Fort Myers where they will help people with utility billing, rental assistance, immigration, and so much more. Last but not least, Vax Truth. They just received an amazing grant from the CDC to raise awareness of Vax Truth's COVID-19 and vaccine in the black and brown communities. Guys, you are in for a treat. Today, we have our special guests with us. Claire Snellbaker. How are you doing, Claire? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. You know, Claire, I was on your website. The name of your organization is called Candle Lighters. That's correct? Uh, correct, yes. And the, the mission is amazing. I know you could tell us better um, than I can share, but tell us a little bit more first about you and about your organization. Okay, well, um, I moved here to Southwest Florida in 1977. Wow. <laughs> Long time, seen a lot of changes. But um, I had a daughter that was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, there just wasn't a lot of local help to help families and children with cancer. Everybody had to leave the area. Hmm. So um, we started a, a simple support group mm -hmm. that then developed into having more families. So um, we ended up starting a nonprofit called okay. Candlelighters of Southwest Florida. Mm -hmm. And so we've been helping families for 39 years. We're almost oh to gosh. 40 years. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I see that you serve uh, five counties and about 450 families. Is that correct? Um, actually, we're at 750 oh families. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Maybe we haven't updated our website. Wow. Um, but, um, yeah, in a five-county area, it goes from Charlotte, Lee, Hendry, Glades, and Collier County. Yeah. So how, how do organizations uh, reach you to even be able to benefit from your services? Well, lots of times we get the direct referrals from the doctor's offices, the social worker, mm -hmm. thank goodness. Um, we have a donated office space out at Health Park. Oh, so, nice. So we're close to um, the Children's Hospital mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Southwest Florida. Um, so we get those referrals, and sometimes it's through just media sources. Um, we hear a story, and we try to find out about the family and get some uh, information or somebody that knows somebody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, they, they let them know about candle lighters and the things that we do and how we can help people in the community. Wow, that, that's amazing. I have a particular nonprofit I work with. It's called Save the Brow Foundation. Okay. Have you ever heard of them? I have not. Yeah, they're actually based out of Naples. And um, sh what she does is she provides um, microblading eyebrows okay. for uh, patients who are, were just diagnosed with cancer. So before they even lose their hair, mm -hmm. she makes sure they have eyebrows. So I don't know if that would work for children because it's like getting a tattoo. It's very painful. Yeah. But but that that that's a, a great organization. I'll, I'll connect I'll connect you to via email and who knows? Maybe if a parent uh, who has cancer could benefit from those services. Absolutely. You know, it, with children, of course, it's a lot different. Right. They, they don't. It doesn't bother them as much, especially when they're younger, when they lose their hair. Yeah. You know, they have the cutest little um, headbands and, yeah. and even yeah. little hats that have long hair, wigs on them. So, so they have a fun, can have a fun time yeah. with them, wearing cute little caps and everything. But certainly as you get older, our teenagers, right. they're far more conscious of going out in the public without hair on their head. Mm -hmm. but, um, so what, what, what age range of uh, children do you serve? 
Well, we actually do births anywhere because, again, young children can get diagnosed with cancer, too. Um, and we go to 21. But now that some of our um, children are being seen with a childhood cancer at the local hospital, some of them may be as old as 22, 26 years old that we do work with them in some capacity. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our programs are generally geared for the younger children. Huh, interesting. Wow. Yeah, that's that's very important because I know when I was growing up, my cousin was diagnosed with leukemia. And I think she lived until she was maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12. And I remember her going through the process of living, losing her hair. And I remember uh, reading Aaron's, your daughter, mm -hmm. um, who was uh, affected by cancer as a child, um, how, 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 how she always smiled and she was always in good spirit. And I remember her name was Tina, my cousin. Mm -hmm. And I remember her being so happy and always in good spirits. Like, where, where, do you, where do the children find the strength to still be in good spirits when they're dealing with something that's so difficult? I think sometimes the parents try to keep um, a personality there that they're happy and they keep the child happy. I mean, we learned to make Play-Doh in their days. There was no child life specialist. Yes. So mom or dad, whoever was there with the child, we were their entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so um, you just kind of keep the child's spirits up. You know, we always were visiting the gift shops and finding yeah. some little inexpensive little trinket to give them. Mm -hmm. um, the Candlelighters started a toy chest project many years mm -hmm. ago, and we would stuff the toy chest for the kids when yeah. they were leaving treatment. Yes. Um, they could pick out a toy and go home with it. And so other organizations started contributing to that toy wow. chest. So we've kind of um, steered away to doing different things and yeah. letting the other organizations yeah. do that part. Yeah. And we focus on other things. That's good. So um, what what type of other organizations do you partner with um, to help fulfill your mission? Because I know serving five counties is a lot of work and I know you really use a lot of volunteers to help you with that. Well, the children, most of them come local. We still have kids that go away to St. Jude's or um, MD Anderson in Texas, um, but most of our kids are local. Mm -hmm. So that that's, helps a lot, even when they're in Collier County. We've tried to um, focus activities, um, moving them around in various counties so that sometimes we might, if there's something we can do in Charlotte County, if there's something we can do in Collier to where those families um, can can participate. Mm -hmm. um, there's a great organization, and I think you've had a podcast with them before, Freedom Waters. Oh, yes, um, yes. Out of Naples. yes. Mm -hmm. um, we do several boating trips a year, oh, plus wow. we um, refer our families to um, to Freedom Waters for them to go out and have a fun day on the waters. Mm -hmm. Fantastic organization. So that's one of our partners. And, um, of course, we're very close to the Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's very important. Um, with, with your with your organization, how do how do you do it? How many volunteers do you have? Uh, describe your your operation. What's a day in the life of um, the executive director slash founder of Candlelighters of Southwest Florida? Well, things obviously changed a lot with the pandemic, mm -hmm. and um, so we didn't have as many volunteers coming into the office. So many of our fundraisers, like all nonprofits, was canceled, mm -hmm. and so. Um, we, we had fashion shows, we had golf tournaments, and so we're slowly getting back into that. Okay. So I had committees of, of families that, oh, um, wow. or, you know, that would come from a, our families help us. We've done fundraisers. That's awesome. I love which, that. Which is really awesome. You know, like we give all of our services for free. Mm -hmm. So when we do gift wrapping at Bass Pro Shop, for instance, you know, a lot of our families come with their kids and they volunteer to gift wrap packages. Mm -hmm. And so the the packages of the six-year-old may not look picture perfect, yeah. but to them they think they're yeah. accomplishing an yeah. awful lot and being able to help, even if it's with a, their finger and a piece of tape on the yeah. package, yeah. is really important. Yeah, and, and can you uh, tell our audience about um, some of the upcoming uh, fundraising events you have and in, in possibly if they could get involved somehow, whether it's through volunteering 
becoming a sponsor or just make a donation? Well, we're hoping to host um, our 26th um, golf tournament. Oh, wow. Um, we, it took us a couple years again because of the pandemic to get to number 25. And so we've kind of had a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to host that again in May. Okay. And then we have a um, we partner with um, Gulf Coast Kayak to mm -hmm. put on a kayak event. Oh wow! And it's a kayak fishing tournament, wow. catch and release, and that's usually held in November. And unfortunately, most of the that was oh, done out yeah, in Matt Lachey. Right. Yeah. And so um, we're looking, you know, to see if if things will be better. The waters are getting a lot better mm. than what they used to be, yeah. but. Um, Everybody wants to explore yeah. the waterways, and yeah. of course, we are still recovering from Hurricane Ian. So, you you know, I've done a lot of events. Um, when I worked at the shelter, we would have big luncheons at the Ritz, and other places will have all these galas. But it sounds like your events are all fun. They, we try to make them fun. We yeah. really do. We have a fashion show um, that we were doing for many years, and um, we actually had some of the televi local television celebrities, uh -huh. you know, be models in, in yeah. there, as well as being the MCs. And they did it along with the kids, along with the parents, mm -hmm. and so it was a fun event. You know, we're we're all about raising money, and we don't want to spend too much money yeah. on the foo foo stuff. Yeah. We want to make sure that more money comes to us so that we can turn around and help the ki kids help the families that's where the money should be going right I agree 100% because I see some of these events and yes some of them raise half a million or even millions of dollars but you see people walking on stilts and these elaborate bands and stuff and and I I always wonder is that really necessary because I think the people are there at the event to support the organization because they believe in the mission and they were they will support you either way but I don't know I, I think it maybe is a psychological thing that because they're purchasing a ticket or because they're a sponsor we have to give them something for their money and this like is very it, true yeah and, and you know as our community grew you know I think that it is even more so that mm -hmm. the the um, galas and all have become more extravagant mm -hmm. and yes they do raise a lot of money and you know and they're mostly supporting very good causes right and but we've always tried to keep it simple mm -hmm. because a lot of our um, helpers they're not professional fundraisers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it makes a difference in how you can present things yes and we're trying to find the sponsors to to sponsor events mm -hmm. and you know you just want again more money in your own yeah. pocket yeah and yeah. and people most donors who come they are coming to support the cause not what you're giving them mm -hmm. so what is your biggest need if somebody's watching and they believe in your mission because perhaps they had a child um, affected by cancer or family member so what is you, you I would say maybe what are your top three needs of your organization well, above all, we always need money. Yes. You know, I mean, without a doubt. And um, so, and we have our website to where you can donate directly, mm -hmm. put it on a charge card, send us a check, whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it works. Um, we also have, you know, people that maybe want to host a fundraiser mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take the lead on it to host yes. it. And, and that's a big thing. When you're a small nonprofit, mm -hmm. you don't have, you know, the executive director founder yes. wears a lot of hats. Yes. You know, so yes. you don't necessarily have the ability to do some fundraiser some because you don't mm -hmm. have the volunteers mm -hmm. who are knowledgeable in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very that's very important. So, um, with that said, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Some sort of fun fact or a story that has impacted you? I know your own personal story because that's why you created the organization. Something that really. Well, I think every day you meet somebody new. Um, yesterday I had a new referral um, for a family, a Lehigh Acres family, mm -hmm. whose child's just been diagnosed. So we have the opportunity to impact that family's life, to let them know that they're not alone. They don't have to walk that 
horrible path alone. Mm -hmm. um, we create programs that are for fun, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's going to baseball games, miniature golf, um, shows at the Broadway Palm Dinner mm -hmm. Theater. Um, we have found what, whatever we do, it better include food. Oh, you know, yeah. The kids want to know, you know, they want their hamburgers, they want yeah. their french fries, you know, so most of our events do, and it's all free for them to attend. Uh -huh. So, um, we're, you know, we're always looking for people to invite us to something that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll bring the families. We'll have yeah. the fun. Yeah. And it makes a world of difference for the children. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when they're stuck in the hospital, sometimes for weeks at a time, you know, with looking at the four walls. And, yes, there are child life specialists. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's lots of toys. But they want to be out and about like normal kids. Mm -hmm. And so when they're not in the hospital and times are good, we make sure that we find something for yeah. them to do. Yeah. We um, provide gift cards um, for the families, for restaurants, mm -hmm. fast foods, for gas, because back and forth to the hospital, yeah. Yeah. it all adds up. Yeah. And um, a lot of these families, they have to stop working. One parent has to oh, stop wow. working because there's so many frequent trips back Back and huh. forth to the hospital. Wow, and, I didn't um, think about that. Yeah, and and so you know, you only your money only goes so far mm. when you're under these conditions, and um, nothing is worse than having to leave your child even for a couple hours yeah. while you go do the school pickup or something. Wow, interesting. So, so. Wow. Well, Southwest Florida is really blessed to have your organization. Um, so where do you see your organization, say, in the next five years? What does, what does that look like? Well, I, I hope that um, Candlelighters can continue to make a major impact on the community, that we'll continue to be blessed with having the donations come in, because without the donations, we can't do the things that mm -hmm. we do. So, so we just hope that... Um, the organization will grow, will get the right people to carry on the legacy, mm -hmm. and so that it will, you know, when we created Candlelighters, that's what it was. It wasn't about my daughter. Mm -hmm. It wasn't named after my daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was actually named Candlelighters, was part of a national organization oh. out of D.C. Okay. And so um, we, and it was the a round circle encasing a candle and it just basically meant that we were all in this together mm -hmm. we're surrounded and we connect in one big circle mm -hmm. and I think that if we can impact the people and reach out to the community people to help us and to keep this organization going I think they'll realize the value that we've had over the past yeah. almost 40 years yeah definitely so what do you do as far as like marketing and, and social media to continue to raise awareness of uh, the, the, your mission in the community? Probably not as much as we should be doing that. That is for the younger generation yeah. to take over that hat. But, you know, we have Facebook, um, we have Instagram, we have YouTube. And so we do have a couple ways to reach out mm -hmm. to people. Um, but again, you know, we don't have the same thing as um, I get college kids that come and volunteer yeah, yeah. and they can zip, zip, zip on the computer. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like amazed. At, I say, show me that again, you know. And so so we're always looking for people that could help mm -hmm. us with developing more. Media right, attention. right. And what's great about I know social media is great, but I, I think with your partnerships with the hospitals and um, the referral, I mean, you're reaching your target audience mm -hmm. because the doctors are obviously right. referring you so that's really good is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up no i think that we just want to know that if you know of a child with cancer make sure that you tell them about candlelighters of south Coast, florida sometimes people do slip through the cracks mm -hmm. and so we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to feel like they're not left alone they're not isolated mm -hmm. We want to be there for them today, tomorrow, and in the future. What, what type of advice can you give parents to, I, I, I guess, I mean, I don't know what the process is of a, a child being diagnosed, but I know it's important to have, like, health care. Like, is it, is it usually caught 
doing a regular annual physical or is the child usually ill and then goes to the doctor? Like how is how is how are these cancers in children discovered and diagnosed? Well, some cancers obviously are hereditary. And then there are other cancers that just develop from one cell that just mm. is becomes abnormal. Um, it, it just spreads. It starts populating more cells. And um, you just, if your child has a, a virus and moms know when something's not right mm -hmm. and don't give up and go to your doctor and, and say something's still not right. Be persistent in running additional tests. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, for my daughter, it was nine months before she actually got a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And and we did. We kept going back and saying something's not right. Something's not right. And and it just took a while because of the type of cancer that she had. And mm -hmm. and the right test hadn't been done. And when it was within 24 hours, we had a diagnosis. So so for someone, say maybe they they don't have legal status in this country, so they don't have Medicaid or they don't have access to health care. Do you? Do you know of any resources that they could utilize to to get care for their children so that we could be proactive with this? I think that, you know, in, in underserved communities outside of our country, um, there are some groups, um, I think it was Help for Haiti years ago, mm -hmm. that would bring children and lots of times the local hospital would help and assist a child that wasn't in this country mm -hmm. um, because they just don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's... When technology and medical experts and medical just procedures are available, it's sad when you read about somebody from another yeah. country that either it's so, the cancer's just grown so much that, that they don't have the help that they mm -hmm. need. Okay. And how can they reach you? Tell us your website and your telephone number. Well, our website is um, www.candelighters, that's plural, C A N. D L E L I G H T E R S. Ooh, I'm impressed. No, S W F L dot org for Southwest Florida dot org. And the phone number to reach us on is 239 432 2223. Guys, you've heard it first. Another amazing nonprofit in Southwest Florida making a huge impact in the community. If you know, know someone who can benefit from their services, please, you see the number and you see the website here on the screen, please reach out to them. I'm Tamika. Stay tuned for more of Grow Your Nonprofit podcast.